of Cyprus has always been the perfect location for fun and surroundings that just feel relaxing. But this week, the world's top rally drivers don't have time to enjoy the beautiful scenery that dates back to Roman times. They have other things on their mind as they tackle some of the roughest roads of the season. Welcome then to round six of the World Rally Championship, where the deep-rutted and boulder-strewn Cypriot roads make this event one of the most demanding on the calendar, where only the fittest and strongest survive. It's tough on tyres too, and the pressure is on Pirelli after two disappointing rallies compared to rivals Michelin. Marcus Gronholm won here last year, but a technical infringement saw him disqualified, currently fourth in the World Championship race. This year it's very rough and, and really hard for, for the cars. The first leg, it's, it's really bad. So, I don't know exactly how, how to approach the stages, the first one especially. I think you know, we cannot go flat out in the beginning, it's so long. Only two drivers have managed to win World Rally events this year. Subaru's Petter Solberg is one. And the man who took his World Championship title, Citroën Sebastian Loeb, is the other. The, the most important for me is to, to, to score some points and to, to keep the contact in the championship because uh, it's so easy to, to retire here uh, for, for a problem uh, because it's too rough. It's very tough out there. A lot of... Uh, Bad rocks and... Uh... But for me, I always like this rally. Always done well, but still we have always had some small problems. Tony Gardemeister heads Ford's challenge as the team chase a 50th consecutive points finish, a record that stretches back to the beginning of 2002. Mitsubishi have nominated Gilles Panizzi as their second point scorer, with Fanny Finn, Harry Robin Pera driving the other Lancer in what's so far been a much improved season for the Japanese team. And Armin Schwartz will again leave Skoda in their increasingly desperate bid for a decent points finish. Then Yanni Turhino is again the Czech team's second driver. So we're in the Mediterranean island of Cyprus for the sixth event of the year. The rally itself based in the southern coastal portal city of Limassol. And after five rounds, world champion Sebastian Loeb is out front, but with the slenderest of leads over Petter Solberg. The two Peugeot 307s are still within touching distance in third and fourth. Peugeot lead the way, indeed, in the manufacturer's race. They're 11 points ahead of fellow French team Citroën, with Subaru in third position. And the event got underway on the seafront in Lemassol, but it's up in the nearby Trodos Mountains, where the rally will be won and lost. A bruising start awaits the drivers. Stage one, 38 kilometers of the roughest roads that Cyprus have to Oleg has to offer. And that means some of the toughest in the World Championship. Sebastian Loeb has the dubious honor of tackling the stage first. And here they won't be worried about sweeping the gravel off the surface. It's the surface itself that's the big problem. The Frenchman has inherited stage opening duties from Solberg as he's now taken the championship lead with two successive wins. The top layer of loose gravel is the least of the worries here in Cyprus, though. This is a very tough introduction to Rally Cyprus. Problem with the handbrake as he uh, handbrakes it round the hairpin, stall the Citroen Zara, then he manages to get restarted on the downhill run, doesn't seem to have lost much time. Very bad. Uh, the stage is very long and very rough, a lot of stones everywhere. Absolutely no grip, it's uh, very slippery, very slow. And I have a problem with the handbrake when I 
use the handbrake. I stall the engine every time, even if I use the clutch. So uh, I stall the engine three times uh, at the start of the stage. Next up is Subaru's Peter Solberg. Some of these roads haven't been repaired since the rally became a world championship event in 2000. So the surface is severely rutted and there are rocks everywhere. Despite the treacherous nature of the conditions, the Norwegian driving style seems perfectly suited to the tight, twisty stages. He's able to avoid excessive sliding and wheel spin. That, of course, helps to conserve the tyres and avoids sidewall punctures. Nearing the end of the stage, target set by load, 37 minutes and a second. It's going to be close, but Solberg is quicker. A good start, but he's got problems. Better, you're faster than Sebastian, but you had a bigger gap going into the last split, but he's pulled a bit back. Uh, engine was overheating. Again with the overheating. Marco Martin has had a frustrating start to 2005. Since his move to Peugeot in the winter, the Estonian has struggled to get to grips with the 307. Despite that, though, it's his consistent driving style that has him running third in the Drivers' Championship. But it's not a good start in Cyprus. He's hit one of the many rocks lining the stages and blown a rear tyre. You can hear it flapping in the wheel arch. It's going to cost him a lot of time. The crew carry spare tyres on board, so they can change the wheel in the road section. He's lost nearly two minutes. Martin's teammate, Marcus Grunholm, is next up on stage. Well, the Finn won this event in 2002 in the Peugeot 206, and he'll be hoping the 307 is up to the task of repeating that result. Indeed, he won last year as well, but a technical infringement saw him disqualified after the end of the event. Could be an early disaster for Marcus, though. He's stalled and seems unable to restart the engine. The day has ended already for Marcus Grunholm. Yeah, something with the engine and, and uh, it happened something. Already four, five kilometers from here, it started to drop the, the, the horsepower and it was not going so anywhere so not here it, it died complete, completely then. Tony Gardemeister is under pressure from his employers at Ford to keep up their proud point scoring record. The team's historically very strong on such rough gravel events and the focus won here in 2000 and 2001. It looks so have gone very well indeed in the similarly rough Acropolis. But Cyprus is not starting well for Gardemeister. He set a good time, but already his engine too is beginning to overheat. It's a difficult getaway as well for Mitsubishi's Harry Robin Pera. Finn's been forced to use the manual gear shift option in the car. Sequential paddle shifters not working. That drops him 18 seconds on the leaders. Jill Panizzi is back as second driver for the Japanese manufacturer. The Frenchman, of course, is a real tarmac expert, but he is very experienced. However, he has retired from Cyprus Rally three times in four attempts, and his bad luck looks set to continue. The driver looking out the back. They've slowed right down. Brother Hervé is checking for cars, catching them from behind. He has a transmission problem. In the end, he'll lose over 20 minutes in the stage. Francois Duval needs a good finish in Cyprus. In his first five rallies since joining the Citroën team, he's only scored points twice. He's fourth fastest here through the opening stage. Difficult stages. The first time I finish uh, this stage, I am very happy. So then, Solberg, the early leader, low 2.7 seconds behind. Gardemeister occupying the final podium spot. The Skodas, 11th and 13th. Marque Martin in 14th after his blown tyre. But the shell shock drivers pause now to reflect on an arduous start to the Cyprus rally. With 17 rough and rocky stages remaining, it's a daunting few days ahead. Grunholm's already gone on stage one. It's advantage Solberg at the moment. More day one action from Rally Cyprus coming up after this break.
Welcome back. The next stage of the Cyprus Rally is the slowest in the entire championship with an average speed of just 50 kilometers an hour. It may be a slow stage, but it seems to suit Francois Duval. The Belgian set the third fastest time on stage two and has passed Tony Gardemeister to claim third spot on the rally. A faulty throttle pedal forces repairs though on the road section before the next stage. Duval is seven minutes late for the start of the test and incurs a one minute and ten penalty second. First you're up, then you're down. That's world rallying for you. Francois, the car sounds awful, and we know you're late. What was the problem? The throttle pedal is broken. Duval's disaster allows Tony Gardemeister to reclaim that third place then. The pin third quickest on stage three, saying, showing some of his best form of the season so far. Well, his father really made his name on endurance events, particularly the African ones. Experienced privateer Manfred Stoll is having an excellent morning in similarly family-pleasing rough conditions. The Austrian already has a top six finish under his belt in Monte Carlo. He's up to fourth. Sebastian Loeb hasn't been affected at all by the rough running and being first on the road this morning. On stage two, he not only wins the stage, but he's nearly a second a kilometre quicker than great rival Petter Solberg to claim the rally lead. The Frenchman's clean, precise driving style is keeping him clear of the many rocks and ruts, and it's fast enough to give him the edge this first morning in the Trodos Mountains. most important rival is the Peter and he's just starting behind so the road conditions are not so different and uh, Marcus was uh, incredibly fast in the first stage but uh, he had a problem so now we are leading so it's going well for the moment. As has been the case on every round so far this year, the private duel between Loeb and Solberg continues here in Cyprus. Subaru and Pirelli have been testing heavily before the event after the worrying trend of Michelin and Citroën's dominance over the recent gravel events. The tougher compound that's been produced for Cyprus should prevent the tyre wear that has been such a disadvantage for Petter Solberg. But here it's the Subaru's engine that is causing Solberg's problems. It's overheating. And by the time he gets to the end of stage three, it's dropped onto three cylinders. You were really concerned for stage two. What was it like? Ah, it's been overheating the whole time. Last stage now also. And going on three cylinders, you can't, you can't go. So. Tough times for Peter Solberg. It's been a tough season for Armin Schwartz, a miserable one for the German. He's yet to finish in the points for the struggling Skoda team in the first five rounds. And that trend is showing a few signs of changing here in Cyprus. He's lost his power steering and the German is bitterly frustrated at the end of the morning. Chris Atkinson's first attempt at the rally site at Cyprus has been just as frustrating. Petter Solberg. In the opening going, 12.3 seconds behind Loeb. Further back, the usual faces in the top six. Privateer Manfred Stoll in fourth. Pedder's brother Henning in sixth position. Some interesting names in the leaderboard. Sebastian Loeb has been looking typically composed this morning since he took the lead. He'll tiptoe his way through the treacherous 38-kilometer stage four in an effort to increase that advantage. Soto Rata 
The Frenchman claimed the win here last year after Grunholm's exclusion, but he preferred to take the victory on the road this year. Huge crowds lining the Cypress stages as ever. He seems on course to do so. Another fast and trouble-free run through this test will certainly help his cause. While Lowe pushes on for glory, Peter Solberg's challenge is already beginning to fade. After the engine running down on power before the service halt, the Empress is again suffering on stage four. This time, the turbo's blown. It's Friday the 13th, and it is proving very unlucky for the former world champion. Solberg drops another 30 seconds. The rally lead is just drifting away from him. After a terrific start to the season, Tony Gardemeister's campaign has lost momentum, but the Finns having his best run here since second place on the Monte Carlo rally. But there's a problem, wouldn't you just know it? The Finn has got a problem, that's bad enough, but the move system that normally reinflates the tyre hasn't taken effect. Well, the answer is simple. He's pulled over to change the wheel. Won't be long before he's passed by compatriot Harry Robin Pera. He's looking to improve on his fifth position for Mitsubishi. He, though, is not running trouble-free either. The transmission problem is back. Again, he's forced to use the manual gear shift, just like, ooh, four or five years ago. It's costing him a lot of time. But he passes the stricken Ford. And now the tables are reversed. Gardemeister's got going, and with four wheels on his wagon, he's flying. It's not long before he catches the ailing Robin Pera. At a hairpin. It's a narrow road section, and the Ford man is unable to get past. Taking a leap out of Jeff Gordon's book. Tap to pass. Well, needs must. In the heat here, tempers are fraying on the demanding Cypress rally. Good to see that even rally drivers aren't immune from a bit of road rage. Well, delays for Gardemeister. Good news for Manfred Stoll's privately run Sitchin Zara. He's now up to third place. Great run for him. After a disappointing season last year in the MV Mitsubishi, he has really got the bit between his teeth in a 2004 spec Citroen. And it's been a promising day too for the other Solberg, multiple Norwegian rally champion, the older brother, Henning Solberg. He's running in a works full focus. He hasn't been nominated to score points by the team. They might yet regret that decision. The Norwegian is fourth, the leading Ford driver now after Gardemeister's problems. While those guys are going well, it's a spectacular end to the leading production WRC driver Mark Higgins' rally. The former British champion Subaru Impreza meets a fiery end. Hopes of a first PWRC win for him, literally going up in smoke. After four stages then, Lowe's lead has stretched to over 40 seconds. Marco Martin continues to climb back up the leaderboard, making up five places on that stage alone. Robin Perrin and Gardemeister, with disastrous trouble, dropping to 10th and 12th. We'll be back for more Day 1 action after this break. Two more stages remain on this challenging first day of the Cyprus Rally. While the fans enjoyed the sunshine in the Trodos Mountains and the beaches down by Aphrodite's Rock, Peter Solberg has got other things on his mind. He's had a day to forget already. But can he survive the two remaining stages with his blown turbo?
He's made it to the end of stage three. Now he's unable to restart the engine. On top of the blown turbo and the reheating, he's now got clutch problems and three punches on stage five alone. These multitude of problems cost a minute and a half, and he's dropped down to third place. This could be the final nail in the coffin of his disastrous first day. Church, church and uh, turbo. Stop them. The Norwegian would be forgiven for thinking he's been cursed on this first day. He doesn't risk starting the final stage, preparing, to, preparing for himself for day two by taking a five-minute penalty for super rallying for the rest of the event, giving himself the chance to fight back. But what could have been a fight back victory in the end will be a scrabble for some points. Marco Martins put together an impressive recovery after his puncture on the opening stage cost him so much time. His standing was 14th after that test, nearly two minutes off the pace. He's already up to fifth after stage four and successive top three times, seeing the Peugeot driver claim another position by the end of the day. Martins now the sole remaining Wurtz Peugeot with Grunholm's 307 too badly damaged to take further part after the first stage. 23 right long long. 33 plus right into two left here. Solberg's they're like buses. There's always another one along in a few minutes. Petter may have had a disastrous day, but the family name is on the leaderboard and well up there, courtesy of older brother Henning in his fourth. He may be a multiple Norwegian rally champion, but he's had a limited WRC career over the past five years. However, he's already claimed his best result of fifth place for Ford in Sweden this season. And ironically, Henning benefits from his brother's misfortune as the first day draws to a close in Cyprus, as he's now in the final podium position. Another occasional WRC driver has moved up to second. Manfred Stoll has been rallying at the international level for over a decade, but his 10 rally campaign this year in the OMV Citroen Zara is his biggest opportunity yet to prove his ability at the top level after a career mainly competing in the Production World Rally Championship. Well, the Austrian goes second quickest through stage five. His runner-up position is safe enough overnight. And the only car in front of him is the brand new factory Citroen Zara of Sebastian Loeb, the reigning world champion. That's not bad for an independent driver in a privately run Citroen. With his main championship rival, Peter Solberg, having such a terrible opening day, Loeb could claim a crucial victory in the championship if he can survive days two and three in Cyprus. He's been fastest all day, winning all but one of the tests. His healthy lead of over two minutes is very much deserved. There don't seem to be many marks on the car either. Behind the rally leader, the likes of Stoll, Henning Solberg and Anthony Varnbold will be delighted to hold places in the top five. Further back, some big names include Peter, Ralber, Peter Solberg going super rallying. have got their work cut out over the next two days. Sebastian, you must be very happy to be leading at the end of a really, really tough day. Yes, I'm really happy to be leading, uh, but it's... It's incredible how, how rough it is, uh, especially with the long stage at the second pass. It was horrible. Uh, also for me, it was absolutely not funny to drive. Uh, I was driving very carefully, very slowly in some places, not to break it, anything. I think it was a good thing to do. What's your secret? How did you stay out of trouble? Everybody else has had big problems. Yes, uh, I think uh, the first secret is to have a very small car, like, uh, like we, we have, and uh, so the thing is, to be careful in the, in the bad places. Uh, after that, uh, Peter has some other problem. He didn't break uh, anything in the car. He has any trouble. So for that, you can do nothing when you are driver. But uh, for the suspension and everything, I try to, to do my best to, to save it. Manfred, how's it feel to be beating some of the top, top works drivers? Yeah, it's quite nice, but it's only first day and there's still two days to go. But I'm happy to have a good run away.
Henning, we used to talk to your brother, Petter, but what a fantastic day for you. Yeah, it was a very good day. Very good. And, uh, of course, it is difficult. I have uh, my strategy for this rally. I have uh, calm a little bit down. And then uh, now we have the results, so that is good. Has it been a question of just focusing on your own rally and forgetting all the other drivers? Yeah, I have to. And, uh, to be best in this game, you have to concentrate on yourself and forget everyone else and then see how it's going. Well, that's it from day one of Rally Cyprus. Join us for more highlights tomorrow evening as we see what the braking cars in the Cyprus Rally have for day two. We'll be back with more tomorrow evening. See you then.